The University of Tennessee Medical Center is our region's only academic medical center. Our mission is to serve through healing, education, and discovery. Our goal is to share the knowledge of our physicians and staff in these health education videos as you make healthcare decisions for yourself and your family. A woman gets diagnosed with breast cancer in many different ways. Uh, one, one way is for a woman to present with a mass that she feels in her breast. Uh, this generally then leads to a patient going to see their physician who then would generally refer them to an imaging center and the imaging may include a mammogram, an ultrasound, uh, and another examination by a healthcare professional. Then depending upon what this evaluation by x-ray means reveals, then one will decide about whether or not a biopsy were to be done. So most often in 2012 and going forward, women are diagnosed with breast cancer by some type of what we call an image-guided biopsy using a mammogram, an x-ray, or even just direct feeling of an abnormality and putting a needle into it of some sort to take a biopsy to look at it under a microscope. It's pretty rare in this day and time for a woman to need to go to surgery to establish a diagnosis of breast cancer. The other most common way a woman can find out she has breast cancer is through a screening mammogram. Screening mammograms are currently recommended to be done annually, beginning at the age of 40 and thereafter. And then depending upon reviewing of sequential mammograms, looking for changes and abnormalities, then one would go to some type of an image-guided biopsy and that would then establish the diagnosis of cancer. These are the two most common ways that women are diagnosed with breast cancer in 2012. The steps taken after a woman receives a diagnosis of breast cancer, or it could actually be in a man because there are about a thousand or so cases of male breast cancer in this country every year, they generally are referred to a surgeon. Uh, the modalities or the methods used to treat breast cancer include surgery, uh, some form of systemic therapy, whether it be chemotherapy or so-called hormonal manipulation, and sometimes also radiation therapy. So those three things, surgery, medical oncology using medications, and radiation oncology using radiation, are the most common modalities used today. Generally, the journey begins in a surgeon's office where a surgeon will sit down and talk to a patient about what their diagnosis is, what it means, what the treatment options are, and then what else may be used somewhere along the journey of their cancer treatment. So most often, once a woman finds out she has breast cancer, the next step is a visit to a surgeon to discuss the next steps and the treatment options. The treatment options available to newly diagnosed breast cancer patients, whether it be a woman or a man, are generally one of three modalities. The mainstay for almost all breast cancer patients is surgery. There's some form of surgery done initially surgery could range from removal of the breast, a so-called mastectomy, to some form of breast conserving surgery where the breast is saved and that goes by various terms such as lumpectomy, partial mastectomy, segmental mastectomy, has many various terms but the idea is that the majority of the breast tissue remains intact. So some form of surgery, some form of systemic therapy, the systemic therapies are generally administered by medical oncologists 
and the options for systemic therapy, which are generally, by and large, given after surgery, include either some form of chemotherapy, medications given through the vein, or some type of anti-estrogen therapy, or so-called hormonal manipulation, which are almost always pills in the pill form. These treatments generally, the pill form treatments generally last uh, for a period of about five years, and the duration of the chemotherapy varies based on what type of medications are chosen and for that particular individual. We are now entering more and more on a daily basis the concept of what we call individualized medical therapy for breast cancer patients, where specific tests are done on the breast cancer cells that are removed from a patient. They go through various testing, and the general idea is to try to find out what benefits systemic therapy may have to a patient, and also what magnitude of benefit that patient may receive. So in other words, they may decide that the special individualized testing may help us decide which treatment is best and then how much benefit that patient would receive. Then the, again, the final modality that we generally use for breast cancer patients is radiation therapy. Sometimes after mastectomy, radiation therapy is also necessary, but more often than not in today's medical world, radiation therapy is not required after mastectomy. Almost always when a woman decides to save her breast, radiation therapy is part of the treatment regimen. So generally a sequence would be something like surgery, followed by some form of systemic therapy, followed by radiation therapy. And these are the three main types of therapy given to newly diagnosed breast cancer patients today. We hope you'll join us for another medical moment. Visit utmedicalcenter.org or call the Healthcare Coordination Office at 865-305-6970 to learn about services available at the University of Tennessee Medical Center.